So why does a manual or why does a church our size foster life groups? And I think it comes down to two basic concepts. One is a biblical foundation for it, and two is a practical foundation for it. So let me go through what that means. When we look at scriptures, specifically the New Testament, we see that the small group is always uh, and most commonly the falling back point, or at least the starting point for believers in the New Testament. So, I mean, it's pretty evident to see that when Jesus starts out his ministry, he starts with picking 12 people that become his apostles. And there's a, a larger group outside of that, but he always comes back to that core group of people. And that's how he begins his movement, how he begins the church. And then becomes uh, a process where these people actually do life together. They share ministry together. Jesus teaches them about uh, his philosophy of this new kingdom and what he's about to do. And, uh, and this becomes uh, really like our first beginnings of a small group. The church starts to grow, the Holy Spirit comes, but even in the book of Acts, we still see that there's groupings that happen of believers, uh, whether it's house churches, small groupings, whether it's the um, gathering that happens in Solomon's portico and in uh, the first beginnings of Acts, but there's always this drawing back to small groups. And a lot of time, uh, churches will fall on uh, Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47 as kind of a starting point for what small groups look like, or at least the sort of the behaviors or the actions of a small group. So let me just read that for you. Uh, starting in verse 42, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the sharing uh, in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders, and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything that they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity all while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. So we see that there's this clear picture in scripture that the small group is a place where there can really be a lot of the heavy lifting of discipleship that's happening within the church context. And then, like I said, this is also a practical thing as well. We all know that Emmanuel is a, a larger church, and that means that someone could come and go on a Sunday morning and relatively never uh, um, just kind of be anonymous within our, our body. But also, uh, Sunday gatherings are too, Lord, too large to a certain degree to establish a certain depth or intimacy. And so, when we talk about small groups, it's really about breaking down the church into smaller, more intimate, more practical, more groups that are able to care for one another in the context of our larger church. Um, also, when you look at the statistics of, uh, of small groups and the growth that happens inside of them, uh, it speaks largely to the context of a small group being one of the core places that people learn and grow in their faith in the church context as well, being backed by many, many different studies and statistics. So, uh, and, and the last probably idea of is, it, is that uh, small groups really help the overall growth of uh, the missional activity in a church. It's a really practical place where members of the church can hold each other to account to be able to study scripture, yes, and to be able to, to grow, but also to uh, move outside the four walls of the church and to be the light of the world that we're supposed to be, to be reaching out to our communities, uh, our, our nation, or, or maybe even globally. Um, but there's that more intimate ability to hold each other accountable to this. And I really love a quote by Francis Schaeffer here. I'm gonna leave you off with this. And he says this, our relationships with each, each other is the criterion the world uses to judge whether our message is truly Christian. Uh, community is the final apologetic. And so it's just the idea that uh, we show the world um, by how we live and how we love one another, whether our gospel is really true or not, and whether there's really transformation within uh, the life and the person of Jesus Christ. So I hope that gives you a little bit of context to why we do life groups.